Thank you very much, Peter. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, thank you for joining us. So today I'll be presenting SCORE using the Supply Chain Excellence Methodology. This is a brief introduction. So I'm the owner and founder of LSC Solutions and its new agency, Supply Chain Manager and Supply Chain Coach, where we provide consulting, in-source support, outsource support, coaching and executive education. I've had a number of years in supply chain management and I've managed many projects for private and public organisations across 17 industry sectors. I've had quite a bit of experience using SCORE since the year 2000 and using the Supply Chain Excellence methodology when it was introduced to the Supply Chain Council uh, from 2009. So I've been trained in quite a number of the different versions of SCORE and I'm SCORE P certified. Previously, I was the Member Development Director for the Supply Chain Council, the Australian and New Zealand chapter, and I was a University Lecturer in Maintenance and Materials Management. I'm currently studying my Doctorate in Supply Chain Performance Management. So today we're going to look at what are we really trying to achieve, the key traits of highly effective supply chain managers, what are the key issues keeping supply chain managers up at night, and then score using the supply chain excellence methodology and looking at a number of score units, users, the benefits and the motivators of using score. And then a few global and local case studies. So what are we really trying to achieve? Well, what we need to achieve is our, is our organization's vision, mission, core values and key results areas. Here are a few corporate goals. So we may aspire to be market leaders, achieve superior shareholder returns, have consistent sales and growth, be cost competitive and value our customer relationships. We do aspire to have best in class supply chain standards and these include superior supply chain performance, globally competitive supply chain strategy, develop a world-class supply chain network, establish best practice supply chain processes and optimise our supply chain resources. However, there are barriers that are preventing organisations from achieving these best of class standards and their corporate goals. Some organisations do not have a supply chain strategy. Organisations or their supply chains may be slow to respond or are inflexible. They may have outdated technology or they may have not utilised the technology to its fullest extent. They are applying a one-size-fits-all approach instead of applying a segmentation approach to their supply chains. There's been a general lack of communication within the company and across organisations and a sufficient lack of talent and a lack of training to keep the talent interested. No standardisation tends to happen with companies who have multiple sites, multiple locations, and improvements are not being aligned with corporate strategy, nor are they being prioritised. So let's look at the traits of highly effective supply chain managers. Well, from PwC's global supply chain survey, they have identified that yes, companies can have it all that if they acknowledge their supply chain as a strategic asset. Leaders focus on best in class delivery, cost and flexibility. Leaders tailor their supply chains to the needs of different customer segments. They outsource production and delivery but retain global control of core strategic functions. They invest more heavily in differentiating supply chain capabilities and the, the interest is growing in next generation technologies and sustainable supply chains. The PwC's performance measurement group has been involved with SCORE since inception and they now manage the SCORE mark benchmarking service. So what are the key issues keeping supply chain managers up at night? Now after this slide there will be a poll question to identify which of these issues may be keeping you up at night. So the summary of key issues have been identified from a research conducted by Michigan State University and the Apex Supply Chain Council, where they conducted a multi-year research with 50 firms in the US. They surveyed the supply chain managers and interviewed the exe 
ex executives. So they identified six key areas. So capacity and resource availability. There's a strain on the supply chains for innovative products and skyrocketing sales. They have outdated machinery that needs to be replaced. Therefore, they need to keep up with the, with the demands with higher capacity machinery. Talent, they're definitely concerned with the competition for talent, retaining new hires and further developing their talent. The products are becoming more complex with increasing variety, and this is causing the stock keeping units to explode. The supply chain risks that were seen to be the most concerning for them include natural disasters, trouble suppliers, and also business continuity. They wanted to know when should they invest in resiliency, as we can tell from the global financial crisis, being a master in resiliency, those companies were able to uh, live through and survive through those times. There are lean challenges with regards to new product development. Compliance with rules and regulations are adding vast complexity to the supply chain. And they did view overcoming the cost and purchasing pressures as something that they need to definitely focus on by applying a primary focus on achieving efficiency. Now, we have a poll to ask, to, to pose this question to you, the same question that was asked of the supply chain managers. So, you have 30 seconds if you would like to respond. So what keeps you awake at night with regards to these six areas? Okay, so here are the results. So complexity at 40% was the, the area that's causing the greatest concern, followed by threats and challenges. So thank you very much for participating in that poll. Now we'll look at SCORE using supply chain excellence methodology. SCORE stands for the Supply Chain Operations Reference Model. It is a world leading supply chain framework and it links supply chain operations performance, processes, practices and people into a unified structure. Now I have examples in further slides showing you some examples of pages within the manual so that you can see how it is an integrated model. It is used for in incremental improvements or massive supply chain transformation. So over the last 20 years, over 5,000 companies worldwide have been using SCORE and about 3,000 of those companies have actually contributed to the development of SCORE. It is owned by the Apex Supply Chain Council and here is the SCORE app. So I definitely recommend downloading this app from iTunes or Google Play. If you're familiar with the quick reference guide that you get when you receive SCORE training, it, is, it has everything that is included in that quick reference guide plus a bit more. Okay, so score. I'll just get my up uh, my notes. I'm sorry. Okay, so SCORE provides a unique framework to review and standardise supply chain processes, measure and benchmark supply chain performance, review and implement supply chain best practices, and align people with practices and processes. So later on in the presentation, I'll be asking a question about which of these five key performance attributes are most important to your company. So the school performance area, all roads lead home to these five key strategic performance attributes. Score is hierarchical in nature, so it identifies your level one metrics. So reliability, that's focused on providing a predictable supply. So it's looking at providing the right goods and services as expected on time in full, perfect condition with accurate documentation. Responsiveness is all about this, the speed and the consistency of that service that we're providing. With agility, we want to achieve an efficient response to change. There could be a change in demand, demand could be increasing or decreasing. We want to achieve that change at the least cost and with minimum exposure to risk. 
With cost management, we're looking to achieve cost-efficient processes and supply chain operations. Asset management efficiency, we're focusing on the supply chain assets. We want to make sure that we have an optimal asset utilisation and returns. So score is hierarchical, so it starts off with identifying, okay, what is your supply chain strategy for particular supply chains? Then how are you going to measure the overall health of those supply chains? It provides you with level two and level three metrics so that you can dig deeper and do a root cause analysis so that you can identify, okay, if we do have a an issue with time, let's investigate that. If we do have an issue with perfect condition, let's investigate that. Now, looking at the manual, so this gives you an example of what, what you'll find. So this here is an example of source cycle time. So this is a metric. It provides you with a description, a calculation, how to calculate source cycle time. Here are the metrics you may wish to use when calculating. Here are the processes that are impacted by this performance. And here are the practices that the organizations have identified that are typically carried out that could be impacted by this performance. Now we're looking at score processes. So score is organized around six major management processes, plan, source, deliver, make, deliver, return, and enable. So supply chain managers will be particularly focused on enable because they are all the management processes, managing performance, managing business rules, data, etc. Now the process side is hierarchical as well. So we have our major processes, plan, source, make, deliver and return and enable. And then we look at the configuration of those processes. What are we actually doing? Are we making to stock, making to order, engineer to order and so forth? And with our process elements, this is when we look at the activities within these processes. And then we can dig further down into the workflow area. So looking inside the menu, here's an example of received product process. We're provided with a description, metrics how you may like, how you may wish to measure this process, practices that are typically carried out. And this is where we start to look at the people side. So we need to identify what are the people capabilities required to carry out this process effectively. With SCORE practices, so SCORE identifies the practices per SCORE process. Now, SCORE is looking at, okay, you've got uh, standard pr practices. It also talks about declining practices. What we are aiming for are best practices because they are current, structured, proven and repeatable. If we do wish to implement emerging practices that we need to understand can we sustain that because we're going to need a high level of capability of skill and also technology to support that here's an example of practices within the score manual if we look at demand management it provides us with a description the processes where we're using demand management the metrics that you would use to measure demand management and the people capabilities required now, as you will see, this codification here on the left side, so this codification is basically showing you where to look in the SCORE manual and the level that it is at. In the SCORE manual, here's the example of a SCORE people page. So this is a capability for picking process. We're provided with a description, the processes where you would use this capability, what are the types of experiences that you may need to have in order to carry out this capability sufficiently and the aptitudes required and the types of training that may be applicable to this capability and the practices that you may wish to adopt to improve this capability. Now we're going into the supply chain excellence methodology. Now the methodology is embedded in the SCORE training. The methodology provides a step-by-step -step guide for achieving operational superiority and it's applying a specific focus on your strategic requirements first before going into the operational areas. The supply chain excellence methodology actually does turn you into a prioritisation expert. It provides you with tools and templates that are digital tools and spreadsheets because it's requiring you to constantly prioritise everything in each phase of the of the methodology now it is a pro 
project-focused methodology. Now, some companies do prefer a business-as-usual approach. What we have found is that leading companies implement SCORE via this project approach and they establish a supply chain center of excellence. And they use that center of excellence to further build the capability within the company with, these, with the knowledge, tools, and templates and also to focus specifically on supply chains that they need to apply uh, dedicated attention to. So there are five phases in supply chain excellence. Build support, so we need to build support across the organisation, define the actual scope of the project, then we need to measure the performance and then identify what are the projects that are going to help us to improve and then we implement the projects. Now, the methodology is designed for to take place over 17 weeks to get you to the stage where you're actually carrying out a pilot. Now, this is all dependent upon whether uh, buy-in has been achieved, the timing of the training, the size of the organisation, and largely your project team, the size, the competency and availability, and the availability of key stakeholders and the state of the data that can cause significant delays. So phase one, you need to clearly identify your objectives to identify what are we trying to achieve and why are we doing this. In a, in a slide I have later on, we're looking at, we will look at the top motivations. We need to establish our sponsor and our steering committee and seek buy-in and support from our key stakeholders. Now establishing the project team structure is very important. It needs to be based on commitment, their competency, their availability, and what is their organisational leverage because we're going to uh, use that leverage to make those improvements and to further uh, seek buy-in from the key stakeholders and the people who are involved in improving the supply chains. If you are embarking on a major SCORE project, then you would be making sure that SCORE training was mandatory and that would need to take place in phase one. This, it is critical for major projects that if any steps are missed in phase one, I would not proceed. I would just wait until everything had been achieved. If, if it wasn't achieved in phase one, something along the line will derail the project. In phase two, and there is a poll following this slide, Phase two allows us to define the context for supply chain improvements. Again, we want to look at what are the strategic requirements? What are we trying to achieve for the organisation? We want to carry out a supply chain segmentation. And here's an example. Segmenting our supply chain allows us to identify, okay, say we have product family one. Who do we supply that to? Well, we supply it to market one and market two. So that's two supply chains. We have another example of service one being provided to market two. So in this example, we have three supply chains. Now, what we would do if we were a private company is that we would get the priority matrix and we'd start retrieving data on each of these supply chains, retrieving data like revenue, gross margins, and other data. And that would allow us to prioritize those supply chains. In a public sector organisation, we'd be looking at prioritising the customer service levels. Now, SCORE requires us to determine our competitive performance requirements of each of your market segments using the strategic performance attributes. So SCORE and the Supply Chain Excellence methodology, they require you to pick per supply chain one superior level attribute, two at an advantage level, and two at a parity level. So in this example, we've said that Supply chain one, we want to achieve a superior level of supply chain responsiveness. And in the other example, we may have grouped supply chain two and three if they have similar characteristics. And um, in that example, we've said we want to achieve reliability at a superior level. So superior level attributes is where you need to focus first. So with, because we are defining the scope of the project, we want to identify which supply chains are we going to include in the scope. So we may select number one and two, but we may say, look, we'll leave three because they've got similar characteristics as number two, and three will just benefit from what the improvements that we make to number two. Then we develop our project charter. They are the words used in the methodology. We may choose to use project management plan. Okay, here is a poll question. And so with this question, even though we should be answering this from the perspective of a major supply chain, if you just consider your company overall, which do you see, which attribute 
do you see as the most important competitive performance requirement for your company overall? So here is the poll and you have 30 seconds to respond if you would like to respond. Okay, so what the response is that 39% see that supply chain reliability is the most important to their company overall. Now that, that is actually a, a typical result. It is definitely a requirement that achieves everything because you've got your in time, uh, on time, in full, error free and perfect condition. So that is tends to be a number one for a lot of companies, particularly engineering and customised um, uh, products and services and number two was supply chain agility so that's requiring flexibility and adaptability so that's excellent thank you very much for responding to that survey I'll just throw up my sorry okay so now we're going to go into supply uh, into phase three analyze performance so this is where we want to select our metrics now selecting our metrics and understanding where we're going to get our data from and understanding how are we going to measure that's very important to understand how that's actually going to be done so we want to measure the performance and establish our performance baseline because we're going to be using this baseline to identify where we are now and where we want to be so we do need to establish our targets so that we can identify what is the gap we are trying to close so you may wish to consider benchmarking the performance. You could be using Scoremark, which is available through Apex Supply Chain Council, and there are other benchmarking bodies. We want to develop a balanced supply chain performance scorecard, and I have an example on the next slide. We want to identify the performance improvement benefit and the opportunity that we are trying to achieve. Then we'll establish a value proposition for the company. We'll identify the causes of performance gaps by conducting a metric defect analysis, and this will allow us to identify key processes that we'll need to review in the next phase. Here's an example of the balanced supply chain performance scorecard, and it's balanced because we have all the attributes considered. Now, in this example, with cost management, we can see that we wanted to achieve a target level of performance of superior uh, for cost management and so we can identify from the benchmark the benchmark says for superior we need to achieve a 2.4 percent of revenue and now when we look at our organization at 8.1 we can see that there is a gap so we need to reduce our cost management by 5.7 percent so this is what we can look at from identifying what is our target are we going to use uh, benchmarks is that going to help us at all and if we do use benchmarks um, then are they achievable? So we do need to make sure that they are realistic for our organisation. Here's an example value proposition. If you want to look at what is the monetary value of us improving, you may want to also consider, well, I know that we're looking at advantage level, but what if we did go for superior? What is the value to the organisation? So this is where you can test and put in data to identify what could we achieve as a one-off savings if we improve this uh, performance in these particular areas. Okay, moving on to phase four, develop project portfolio. So phase three guides us where to look in phase four. We want to identify and quantify the supply chain issues and opportunities. Now, depending on where phase three told us to look, here are some examples. We may want to review the supply chain network, review product flow, review our inventory, our service levels. We look, want to look at supply chain responsibilities from a network level and also from a department level. This is where we get to review our processes and particularly our business rules because that's what's driving behaviours. Our best practice assessment, we want to look in the score manual and identify, okay, what are we doing now? Is that declining or is it standard or is it emerging? Is it sustainable? What do we actually want to achieve and what have the other organisations achieved? We want to group like issues and opportunities together 
into projects and then we want to quantify the benefit of each project because we need to understand okay if we're going to go ahead with this project what is the gap and by how much is it going to close that gap on our performance scorecard then we assemble and prioritize the project portfolio and then there are, there are excellent tools in the supply chain excellence methodology uh, spreadsheets how to prioritize using the impact and effort assessment then we would seek approval of our project portfolio and develop an implementation plan too for the approved projects. Phase five is implement projects. We have a few options of how we could go about this. We could select one project as a pilot and get results and promote the, the outcomes that we've achieved and then roll out the next project. We could decide to implement all the projects in order of priority as per approval or we could implement the projects as improvement initiatives as part of our business as usual and keep reporting on those on a regular basis. Other requirements is we would develop standard operating procedures and test those procedures and we would use those procedures as our training manuals and then the, your supply chain centre of excellence would provide implementation coaching. We would implement a best a benefits realisation management process so that we can continue to track benefits and to make sure we are closing those gaps on the performance scorecard. And we would establish our supply chain centre of excellence and identify who should we involve, what are, what are our, what's the extent of our toolkit that we'll be using and what are the major supply chains we're going to continuously focus on. Then after we've imp implemented our projects, we'll conduct a post-implementation review to see did it work are there improvements that need to be made? And then continually track the benefits. Now we'll look at some SCORE users. So SCORE was designed to be industry neutral. So industries that have used SCORE include consumer packaged goods, oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, high-tech manufacturing, automotive, computers, chemicals, food and beverage, industrials, supply chain management consultancies, and academic institutions. So a lot of these companies have volunteered their people to participate on research programs to further develop SCORE. Okay, so let's look at the implementation benefits. Average operating sales income improvement of 3%, typical inventory turn improvements of 20%, delivery reliability improvement of 25%, 20% improvement in flexibility, 30% faster system implementations with 30% more functionality, continuous improvement portfolios refreshed at, at a value of 0.5%, and mitigation of costs associated with risk management. Previously, the Supply Chain Council looked at the aggregate share value of Fortune 1000 companies and compared that to the growth of Dow and S&P 500 companies. Score and Supply Chain Excellent companies grew faster in the aggregate value than Dow and S&P 500 companies. And after the 2008 financial meltdown, score companies grew at an even accelerated rate, three times the Dow and S&P companies. So an unusually high correlation to company performance. So motivations to use SCORE, to build a technology investment roadmap in search of return on investment for capacity, creating a, a supply chain strategy, implementing supply chain performance improvements, improving sales and operations planning, developing organisational talent, support and competence, maximising use of existing technology, achieving operational excellence, due diligence as part of a merger or acquisition, globalising and managing business processes, integrating with the greater value chain, integrating Lean, Six Sigma and SCORE to build a better project portfolio and defining and building an effective and efficient supply chain organisation. Here are some global and local case studies. So from a global perspective, these are the case studies that Supply Chain Council uh, and these members have contributed. So Sassel and Africa, they have uh, an estimate value of 1 billion cost improvements over a three year period. Raytheon, they have identified 75% reduction in transactional processing for material acquisition. Adva Optical, they have reduced inventory days of supply by 47%. Saab, initial business cases have identified savings of a total of 15 million US. 
And closer to home, Balance Agri Nutrient, they actually exceeded all of their targets that they were aiming for. And Douglas Pharmaceuticals increased vendor difot, customer difot, a reduced custom, uh, cost of goods sold, and inventory days of supply. Here is an example of the results that we've achieved at my company. Now, in your toolkit, you have a range of tools that we use. When you're using SCORE, it provides you with the framework and provides you with the what. It is a reference model and it's there to guide you and it's there to explain to you what have other companies done and how's everyone measuring, what are the practices they're setting up, what are the people skills required, etc. So it is an excellent guide on what to do and using it to standardise how you manage your supply chains. When you have to get down to the areas where you actually, actually have to improve the processes, that's when you have a bigger toolkit, you're using Lean, Six Sigma, etc. Here's a testimonial from Sydney Trains. I've previously helped them to manage a supply chain project using the SCORE model and the supply chain excellence framework. And this reference is provided on LinkedIn. So to summarise, we truly need to understand what your organisation is needing to achieve. We need to attain the traits of highly effective supply chain managers through constant research and education. We want to address supply chain issues that are keeping you awake at night by adopting proven world-leading supply chain management methodologies. And SCORE and Supply Chain Excellence are two examples. We want to clearly identify the improvement objectives, key motivators, and develop a clear value proposition all in alignment with your corporate strategy. We want to develop a, establish a supply chain center of excellence to sustain, and that's a key word, we need to sustain best in class supply chain standards to achieve your corporate strategy. So thank you very much for your um, attention today, and I'm now going to hand you back to Peter. Thank you, Sharon, and as we can clearly see from Sharon's presentation that the, uh, the EPIC SCORE model offers real practical techniques for managing and measuring the supply chain um, and, of course, applying the, the model as she's outlined here. As a premier channel partner of EPIC, we at EPIC AU are the only facilitators of SCORE training in Australia. Uh, we have expert SCORE facilitators. Sharon is one of them, uh, who are well equipped to share the knowledge uh, through a, a, a program. The program score program is a three-day program that, that we have available. If, uh, if any of you are interested in, in uh, this seminar, in this workshop, you can register for your, your expression of interest for this program right now. It can either be in-house or it can be via uh, public classes, we have both offerings available, but in your chat box you can just type in SCORE, S-C-O-R, and uh, we will send you the information via email. 